Hi everyone, it's Kirsten Gunners here, um, Operations Manager for Business in Heels. So today I've got the real privilege of introducing you to one of our new ambassadors for Business in Heels. And I'm so excited to be doing this. And I want to introduce you to Michelle Pascoe who Hi. has the nomina nominals of CSP. She is an international speaker. She's an accredited trainer, a researcher, an author, and a podcaster. Boy, Michelle, you must be so very busy. Um, <laughs> she established her training and mystery shopping company, which is called Optimum Operating Procedures and Services, also known as OOPS, or OOPS, in 1994. She's, she's got an unbelievable and undeniable passion for customer service. Um, Michelle combines that customer service scenarios and her experience with that special specialised knowledge that she's got to ignite the potential in each and every individual so that they can achieve outstanding results, which is pretty much what a lot of us want to do, but don't always quite get it right, Michelle. Definitely. <laughs> So I want to ask you a little bit more. Why don't you explain what you do and sort of give us a general overview of sort of, you know, oops and, and how that came to be. So tell us more. Okay. Well, firstly, thank you very much for having me and welcome to everybody who's watching us live and then in the recording. So I started my business back in 1994 and I celebrated in the month of July 25 years in business, which is, wow. yeah, and it's been a wonderful 25 years and it continues to grow year upon year, which is fantastic. Why I started the business, I had two really small children that I was caring for and I had, uh, my mother had all those cared for my children, you know, when I was working in the corporate world for many, many years and therefore um, when she passed away, I just sort of thought, well, what am I going to do? I can't travel into the city anymore. So I started up Oops. And it's just grown from there. You know, back then the only thing I could do was type and type really fast. So I thought I will start off a secretarial outsourcing business. Now, thinking wow. what we have today that everybody's so used to virtual assistants, if you could imagine 25 years ago me knocking on doors and saying, you know, give me your typing and I will do it or your little, you know, cassette recorders, you know, for the dictaphone. And I remember do those years. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, but it was a real trust thing and it, they just couldn't understand how I could do it off-site. So, you know, it was only a few short months and I kept persevering for that and I built up a client base, but that's when I got into the training and then the research and I created my own proprietary software and, you know, and, the story goes on and I love it. And yeah. here you are now. Here I That's am, yes. Fantastic. Yes. So what's been your proudest moment then um, or achievement um, throughout sort of that life of business? Yes. Look, I think, you know, to be honest, just being in business for 25 years and continuing and building the business, but also over that 25 years having some amazing clients. You know, mm. I have very fortunate that some of them have been with me more than a decade, some of them two decades. And through my proprietary software, I have all their analysis over that time. And that's wonderful, you know, just to, to grow with their businesses, but also be on their personal journey. And, you know, achieving this in business, I now have employees or, you know, that range, there's about 70 of them. Wow. Plus, many of them are researchers. Plus, I have my great administration team, including Kate, who you've spoken to and emailed my EA. So, you know, it's not just about being a one-person show. And, and rest assured, when I first started 25 years ago, I knew there'd be a time that I'd, I'd need to employ somebody to help, uh, but I never expected it to grow to this point. And having the researchers is fantastic. And I said employees, I don't believe in subcontractors, but then having an admin team that Kate heads up. So, you know, I only got back from Denver on Sunday. Wherever I am in the world speaking at conferences or attending, Kate is looking after everything here, both with the clients and the team, which is which is fantastic. So I see that as a great achievement. 
Wonderful. I especially like that growing with your clients. It's being able to sort of not just have your own achievements, actually um, participate and feel successful about their achievements as they've gone through and seeing that longitudinal um, approach of being, you know, saying you can sort of stand back and reflect and say, well, I'm actually part of the reason why they've also existed for a long period of time. Yes. Which is is quite a great thing to do. It is. what would be your defining moment then, Michelle? Uh, my defining moment, actually, you know, when you think about it in business, was actually taking that step from doing the external secretarial services, our virtual assistant, as sort of we call it these days, to actually stepping into that training role mm. because I never thought about training and it was actually a friend who uh, had travelled into Sydney with me going to school many years prior to that who rang me up who had opened his accountancy firm and said, I've got a receptionist. I'd love you to come and train her how to answer the telephone, how to manage mm. that front desk. I couldn't think of anybody better. And I'm thinking, I don't know anything about training. So I went off and did a course and I just loved it. And now, you know, my training covers both the front line, not just the customer service component, but how do they deal with resilience? Because our customers these days are not as nice as they used to be. No, that I love and then of course the senior management both as a you know uniting that multi-generational team how do they get that 18 year old to tell the 45 year old what to do so yes. to speak but also mentoring them and coaching them on their journey as leaders so that that you know and it all started from that one phone call saying could you come and, and train my you know my first receptionist so it was just pretty yeah, cool. and it's, it's really interesting when you sort of look at it from that perspective I'm I'm i you know, I was around in corporate for 25, 30 years and, and I started as a junior. And right. it's being trained, you know, to do reception, you were the face of the business. And whilst you might be taking calls, um, you know, I think one of the things one of the uh, ladies taught me um, was very much about having a smile in your voice because yes. it needs to be welcoming. It, you know, you need to, that person, when they come into your front of house, no matter which way they enter, has to be you know that smile and it's greeting and it's warm and and we don't seem to do a lot of that sort of training much anymore no you know and it's it's a shame because you know when I first started I would ring up different companies you know I, I'd literally pull up out the front of you know large industrial estates and walk in with my business card or make cold calls because I used to do a lot of that in the early days yeah. and I'd say you know, I train on effective telephone techniques you know if you're fr- and they go you know they'd answer the phone you know not even saying the name alone the company and they go I don't need how to be told how to answer the telephone and, and I feel like saying without tuning my own horn guess who's in business 25 years later and you're yeah, yeah. <laughs> perhaps yelling at people is not yes, the best way to because you know it was funny the receptionist usually was the the youngest yes usually the lowest paid yeah the front line of your business yeah it's so important to get it right you know because that's the first point that they make a perception of your business yes Mm. and and, you know the people that are listening to this for the many of them they are that front line yes we've got to think you know when we're focused on writing an article or doing a piece or a proposal that when that phone rings Mm. we really have to be thinking all right we've got to put that hat on yeah have to be we are that front line of our business yeah and it's and it's so important to get it right the first time because as you say um customers have a, a much different set of expectations you know compared <laughs> to a number of years ago <laughs> so, so michelle what are you most passionate then about with making a difference what what's the thing that you want to be sort of you know when people sort of talk about you or you know what do you want to be most known for look uh the most important thing to me that I've been able to share over these years is giving people an opportunity to see that there is a choice, that they do have a choice, that they mm. are in control. You know, for many people, they put, they, you know, they think that their lives are controlled by others and, and sometimes it, it can appear that way, mm. but it's getting to see that there is an opportunity for them to choose the life that they want, not mm. The life that others are choosing for them and mm. you know when I've said about these 25 years not only have I been on the journey with the client with the, with the company and the, the, the business but it's been the journey of so many young guys and and girls you know I deal a lot with the hospitality industry yep. so you think about 
for two decades and they were cleaning ashtrays and carrying Ooh. the line of glasses and now they're CEOs and they've taken me on this journey and it doesn't matter where they are on that ladder, whether they've reached the top or they're on that first run, but they love what they're doing. Mm. Pick that up when you're training or you're speaking on the stage from a conference and you can just see that that just twinkle in somebody's eye and you go, you've got it. You know that you can make that choice. It's, it's up to you. And that. there's a real level of trust that I think that gets, being, uh, that gets built with people when you build their confidence or, you know, you can showcase the thing that they do well yes. um, to make it happen and, and, and getting that, you know, twinkle in their eye to say, well, actually, I feel really good because I was able to actually do this. And, yes. and yeah. I think that's a really big thing. It is. So, Let's have a couple of fun questions. So what, what do you do when you want to chill out? What, what's your favourite thing? <laughs> what do I, I like? Well, <laughs> I love brand designs. I actually did a knockdown rebuild oh. last year with my husband. So it was really cool. It was done within a year. We we lived here for 23 years and I sort of thought, ah, this place is driving me crazy. But yeah. I love uh, the British brand designs because I think that guy just has a drop-dead gorgeous voice. However... <laughs> My two daughters have exposed me to Netflix. Oh, and, yes. You know, you hear, hear people going, you know, I binged on Netflix. I'm thinking, seriously, what else have you got to do in your life? Well, I did it. <laughs> and have you seen Frankie and Grace? I haven't Grace seen it Potter? yet, but I, 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 oh. I, I understand the whole, you know, Reno, you know, sort of it, it's the reality shows and, you know, I have to say I'm a bit guilty sometime of watching a few and doing the binge. So. Yes. I get. You've got to watch Frankie and Grace because it is hysterical. And you know what I love about the show is that it shows you that two wonderful women, Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlinson, they're 80 mm. and they're up there and they're producing this fantastic show. And it doesn't matter how old you are. Mm. And you can really make a difference. And so it's a great, it's a hoot of a show. Yeah, there's been a lot of talk about it. So I, I've, it's on my list. I've just got such a long list. It's that whole binge thing, you know, and you sort of by the end of the weekend, you go, oh, but I'm only halfway through. You know? <laughs> what am I going to do? Oh, I have to go back to work now. Yeah. <laughs> do, you have a, do you have a favorite book you know you've got the binging you know yes. is it architectural books or color swatches well, what's your favorite book to read i suppose you all should say i read the business books and which i do you know i think i'm drowned in those over the years and you know in my early 20s i used to read a lot of robert ludlam you know i like that yeah. yeah. But recently I've really got into Kate Morton. She's a fantastic Australian author from Queensland. And her, I've, read, I've read all her books. And you've really got to think about it when you read it because she goes between two different centuries or two different decades. So the last one that I read was The Clockmaker's Daughter. Ooh. Very, very different. And you can't sort of just pick it up you know, frivolously and read it for like two minutes. You've really got to <laughs> because you don't know where you are and that's got a lot of components to it. So it's good. That might be one for my next long haul flight, maybe. Yes, perfect for that, yes. So you've heard it from Michelle, clockmaker's daughter perhaps, you know, while you're sitting on a lounge or, you know, yes. soaking up by the pool over your Christmas holiday. Um, yeah, with a yeah. with a cocktail or two being delivered might yeah. be the good thing. That's like that, a plan. That segues nicely to my next fun question. So, wh what's your favourite beverage then that you might have when you're reading one when of those? I, when I'm reading without dripping ice all over me, I have gotten into the Moscow Mule. I, I quite ah. Oh yes, I like my vodka and those lovely little copper tankards. But yeah. I, I'm a girl and I will not refuse a bubbly. <laughs> oh right, yes. Well, most. Most women are good with a bubbly, you know. It's uh, it's one of those things, heels, bubbles, and and just a general good conversation and having a great time. That's so, right. Cheeses and, and cheese, yes, you know, <laughs> cheese grows as we get older. It gets better. It does, cheese. Yes. Yes, I never used to like that smelly blue vein, but I'm really into it now. <laughs> well, I don't mind a gorgonzola, but in a pasta meal, I, I'm still not quite at the point of a blue vein on a cracker. Sort of quite can't do that yet. Well, swing it with a 
my mouth full of champagne. And <laughs> Just put the two together and it'll be fine. If it's a good champagne, it'll be, it'll, it'll knock it over well. It does. So, thank you so much for taking the time today, Michelle. I'm, I'm, I've definitely gotten to know a little bit more about you and your business. Thank and you. I, it's, I think, you know, our ambassadors are those people who can shape um, you know, perhaps the journeys that other people are taking through business. You know, you've you know you've seen tried and true methods. You've made the mistakes like a lot of us um, are doing, um, and you know you're able to give great advice and guidance. Um, but I think it's also that you know you've started from the one person having to do everything, and there is a way to actually move up yes. and, you know, get to the point where you can have people working for you. It's, you know, and and have the building almost like your, your work family around you, yes. and it comes from having that idea and then the forethought and also, you know, tapping into really great people like yourself yes. um, to be able to move forward. And so, you know, it's great to have you join our ambassador group and we're so excited. And oh. for those of you as part of the Business in Heels community, please welcome Michelle um, and feel free to reach out and perhaps ask a question um, yes. as part of our Facebook groups. And I'm sure that you'll see Michelle more at some of our other events. Um, oh. And we'd love to hear, you know, sort of questions from you, um, perhaps to Michelle. And we look forward to having her as part of our team, um, giving all of us some great advice um, on, you know, different parts of running a business. So thank you so much, Michelle. And I look forward to learning more about some of those other books that you might have. So. <laughs> Perfect, Mr. Moore. Take care and I wish everybody the best in your business. You know what? As long as you love what you're doing, that's the most important thing. And don't listen to those naysayers or that inner self-critic. That's right. Yeah. Well done. <laughs>